Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Serving It Up with Joe Nathan. And I'm your host, Pastor Joe Nathan Hay Haywood of Valley Grove Christian Faith Center. And I'd like to thank you all who might turn that dial and keep it on this station. I appreciate you for watching. We're trying to do something new and exciting in Las Cruces and the surrounding cities, as well as the state of New Mexico. All right, so we got a great show for you tonight, and I've got a couple of guests with me. Actually, three to be exact, and that's going to be uh, my co-host. Uh, her name is Vanessa Scott. She is the publisher of my book, and is Authentic Flavor of God. We also have a brother by the name of Troy Cogdell. I appreciate him for being here tonight. He's into a filmmaking himself, and I've got another gentleman by the name of Jordan Aguilar, and I appreciate them all for being here. He's, he's highly into education. So I thank you once again. We've got a nice number of things that we're going to look into. We're going to be looking into family, crime, uh, family-oriented uh, financial illiteracy, and some other areas that might be a little shallow taken care of uh, from maybe our law enforcement, maybe our government. Uh, we want to look at a lot of different things. This is not only to challenge our city, but this is also to bring our youth out uh, because I mean, who's, who's, who's really tending to our youth today? Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing I want to focus on. We're going to be trying to do some talent shows. I've got some talent coming from Arizona, some from, uh, uh, what is it, Texas, and I also have some coming from different areas. But what I really want to focus on is Las Cruces, New Mexico. I have originated here from Detroit, Michigan, where I used to do a couple of songs myself. I had two albums out before I moved here. And I thank God for one, the opportunity to come to a place, uh, as they call it, the land of enchantment. Las Cruces has enchanted me, and I thank everyone who has been a part of my life, who has shined in my life, and been inspiration for my life. Uh, so, I, I, And saying that, I just want to go right into my guest. Her name is Vanessa Scott. We want to know, I want to know, I don't know about Troy <laughs> or Jordan, but I want to know who is Vanessa Scott. Can you tell us who you are? <laughs> um, Caramel Princess. That's right. who I am. <laughs> Caramel Princess. You know. All right. <laughs> and why is that name? Where do you get that name from? I don't know. Me, me and my sisters just have this thing. I'm Caramel Princess. My sister is Caramel Queen. My other sister is Caramel Kiss. Oh, wow. Just That's stuck a lot of sugar. Us. That's a lot of sugar in one house. A lot house. of caramel. <laughs> We're sweet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, so who who came up with was was your was it your mother your father or just you you girls who came yes, up with this name? Just us, just Isn't that just, just like some just sassy, us. sassy <laughs> female. That's just like some sassy <laughs> people gonna come up with some names like that. But that's all right. You know that's that sounds great. <laughs> so that it shows your originality. So let me tell you. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know your publishing comp company. Uh, it's called Nisa or Nisi? No, Nessa. Nessa. Okay, Nessa correct me. Publishers. Correct me. Nessa Styles. How did you come up with that name? Um, just kind of stuck with me again. Like, mm -hmm. well, my first book, my first book that I ever done, right, was called Nessa Style Poetry. Okay, so, okay. So the Nessa Style kind of stuck with me. So do you remember any any of your uh, maybe some of your poems or? A little bit of it. Can you can you give us a little something? <laughs> give us taste some of that sugar. Right. Right. A little oh. taste. Miss Caramel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember any. Okay, oh. she no, don't no, remember I any. I don't remember them. I just don't remember word for word. Right, 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 right. I'm to so try. what? I'll let you get, I'll okay. <laughs> so what? What kind of? What kind of? Uh, you know, in that first book, what kind of th things? Things kind of inspired you to write that first book? Mm. My sister. My yeah? sister. Yeah. Yeah. In what way? She, she, my sister Tracy's just, all, she's always into poetry, just writing, she's very creative. Wow, wow. So, you know, of course, being my big sister, I want to look up to her. Right, right, so right, I like, right. You know what? I could do this too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so. and, ma and make that point across and let her know that she ain't the only one. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, I grew up with uh, two other siblings in my home and my, my sister and my, um, my brother. And my sister's actually, she just recorded her sec, uh, actually her first CD. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My so. sister has two CDs out right now. Okay, okay. So also, uh, how many books do you have published? Mm, I have like about 20. Wow. 20, 20 books? books. Wow. Yes, and it's and just basically reputation. Like I don't promote it, you know, just people get referred to me and I do it. 
Okay, okay. So you got 20 books out, and they're from different people around the world or just in this general no, area? No, just Las Cruces right now. Las Cruces area. What about that, Las Cruces? Did you know that this young lady mm -hmm. has, uh, you know, written, uh, actually not written, but published books from 20 different individuals, and I'm one of them? Wow. <laughs> All right? That's wow. awesome. That's awesome just to know that yeah. we got a publisher here in Las Cruces, New Mexico, who is willing to hear what you can put on paper. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I think that's awesome. That's so we ought, to, we ought to take the time to, you know, kind of pay attention to what's going on around us, so, so to say. You know, I mean, how many times are you, you know, walking down the street? You don't even know if you're walking uh, across a great writer or someone who, you know, just can put things down on paper and, and make them feel like, you know, hey, I can do this. Uh, this is what I'm feeling, even if, if even if it sounds deranged or something that shouldn't be in public. Somebody else can say, hey, I can I can help you arrange that where it can be in public, mm -hmm. and people need to know what's going on inside you. Everyone got a story. Do you? Man. Everybody yeah. got a story to tell. <laughs> I want to ask anybody. Do you have a story to tell? If so, why don't you check out this young lady? Uh, you can also reach her at the at the numbers uh, uh, and her contact. All right, you, you see it at the bottom of the screen. Why don't you check it out? Give this young lady a call. If you've got something you want Las Cruces to know and other remaining cities, why don't you give her a call? Because I did. I trust her with my work, and I have seen her in, in action. Okay? So I appreciate that. Amen. And so let's see. Let's see. Um, when did you realize that you had a strong love and passion, you know, for this? In high school. High school. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was always in, you know, advanced <coughs> creative writing. Excuse me. So you were in creative writing? Yeah. That, wow. That, you know, in advanced creative writing, we had to do a book. Okay. And, you know, it was just for school, but right. I really got into it. And right, right. So ever since high school, I've been on it. <laughs> okay. How was your teacher? How was your teacher in, in, in your creative writing class? Uh, did, they, did they see? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people can actually yes. see that, that yes. gift. Yes. Yes. How, how did they uh, respond to you? Were they hard on you or were they more into pouring themselves in or were they the type of person who pulled it out of you and made sure you, you gave them what you wanted, what yeah, they wanted? She definitely pulled it out of me. Her name was yeah. Miss Clifford. I'll never forget her. Wow. Thank you, Miss Clifford. I'm going to say thank you thank from you. serving up with Joe Nathan. Even if she is not alive, her family, we want you to know the Clifford family. We thank you for pouring yourself into uh, this this young lady, amen. Yes. All right, now yes. I said amen like I'm at church, <laughs> but I am a preacher. All right, <laughs> all right, amen. all right, all right. So that's awesome. So wow, I mean, I I hope you guys are enjoying this conversation, just getting to know who we have in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Once again, I'm going to tell you, my name is Pastor Joe Nathan Haywood, and this is serving it up with Joe Nathan. I've got another question I want to ask you. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, coming up, new authors. What what would you tell them? In any any author, any writer, any new publisher, how would you inspire them? What what words would you tell them? You know, just be yourself. Yeah. Don't try to make this book for somebody else mm. or try to act totally different. Yeah, that's good. Also, don't try to um, be so correct with it. If yeah. if you speak a certain way, then put it in your books. Make yeah, it be you. Good. You yeah, know. Yeah. She she you know, she's <laughs> saying that she's saying that because he told me that. <laughs> She said, I don't want to change what you said because it's you. You know, I am from the ghetto of Detroit, New Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, so, I, I, you know, I won't forget who I am. You know, I won't, I won't forget where I come from. So, now, why don't you tell us just a couple of the titles, a little bit more than a couple. Talk to us about some of those titles. Tell us, uh, you know, where, some of your books. Name some of those titles and, and let us know how you got those titles. Well, we did a book called Battle Poems, and it was me and a whole bunch of different artists, and okay. we kind of just, like, battled each other. Yeah. But, you know, just poems, and we turned it into a book, so wow. it was really good. Wow. That's Any battlers out there? <laughs> I'm challenging you. Oh, she's oh, challenging battling. you. All right, now watch out. She did it for me. She can do it for you. <laughs> What's another one? Um, like I said, Nessa Style Probes. Okay, okay. Any, 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 what about, what about some of your, uh, your writers? Uh, any of the books that really stand out from some of your writers? Yeah, um, Linda Haywood. Okay, yeah, that is my a heart. Secret, that is my A heart. Secret Cry. A Secret Cry. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. yes. 
Uh, and that was, you know, dealing with a lot of different poems of uh, uh, her, her personal uh, life and how she lived, how she came up, mm -hmm. some of the things she's seen, you know, throughout her own children, uh, as well as those who live around her. Yeah, I know, I know, I know mine. Yeah. yeah she's very passionate. Coming out with some more books. We're okay. We're going to do some more books for okay, her, too. Okay, all right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Mike Tez, we're doing some books out for oh, him. Yeah. Oh, Mike Tez. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Mike? I would have to say to you, man, I appreciate you very much because without, you know, me knowing about Relevant Talk, of course, I wouldn't be having the show today. So thank you again, Mike Tez. And that is with Character Kids. And also he's at the IHOP on Highway 70. So I, I really appreciate that. Sometimes you have to give uh, those shout outs and those thanks to those who really count. I really appreciate that. All right. So, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of um, excited uh, to see what's going to come out next and uh, who might write a book, who might even call her number. Is there anybody that feel once again that you really have something you want to say? I want you to give this young lady a call. I want you to give her a call and, and you know, ring her number off the phone, and, and you know, off the hook, rather, and, uh, you know, really let her know, I got something. I want to know what you think about it. I, I believe she'll tell you the truth. All right. So, yeah, so we appreciate that. Coming out with some new ones. I have um, Marcus Riley. Okay. Yeah, he's coming out with a poetry book, too. Okay, okay. Also, um, Israel Sanchez. Israel Sanchez, okay. Yes. Okay, that, that, that's it. Definitely working. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So that's, that's awesome. That's yes. awesome to know. And okay. then also your book. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're working on it. And then I'm, oh, I don't, I, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you this. Uh, another book came to me after I wrote Authentic <laughs> Flavor of God, and I told her about it. And, uh, man, it's going to be a hot to trot book. It's going to be a melter. Uh, a steamy eye one and it's going to be uh the name that came to me is sex lies and scandals from the home to the church i have dealt with some things i have seen some things i have been a part of some things and wow you know i've already written about four uh, actually no about seven or eight pages on that and i got some hot topics that i want to deal with and, uh, you know, me being the preacher that I am, I'm one with the streets, and I love what's going on in my city, okay? And also, I hate what's going on in my city. So, I'm, I'm a man with many emotions, and I just want to share with Las Cruces, other cities around, and also back home in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, like I said, I can't forget where I came from. You know, I went through a lot of trials, tribulations, some temptations, uh, some high expectations, some lies, and whatever else that took place in my life. But I like to say, that you know what, it's going to be something else uh, on Serving It Up with Joe Nathan. We're going to do a little, a little something and we're going to stir up a, a, a landmine and, and, you know, we're going to do some dirty dog, to, you know, get, bit, get busy with it, okay? <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate you all tuning in today. Once again, it's Serving Up with Joe Nathan. My name is Pastor Joe Nathan Haywood and I serve and uh, pastor at Valley Grove Christian Faith Center in Vado, New Mexico. That is 221 Hogan Road, Vado, New Mexico. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate you. secret. Even dancers have to work to stay in shape. How do I keep my body fit? Jazzercise. It's the perfect workout for me. The latest music, the hottest dance moves. It feels more like a girl's night out than a workout. Jazzercise helps me dance my way to a better body. When's the last time you danced? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Celebrate, celebrate. Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main. See you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors. We're buying a car. It's always the same.
celebration. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of the show. Serving it up with Joe Nathan, I am your host, Pastor Joe Nathan Haywood of Valley Grove uh, Christian Faith Center. Once again, I have my co-host, and I understand that she's got a couple of questions she want to ask a brother. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I don't know what she's going to ask me, but I'm ready to <laughs> shoot them out. So go ahead. Talk to me. What you want to ask me? Okay, so my first question is, what makes you different than any other pastor? Wow, what makes me different? Mm -hmm. You know what? <laughs> this is what makes me different. Um, I'm, I'm very, very in tune to the streets. Uh, you know, because sometimes you got those pastors out there, uh, they talk about it. Uh, they, uh, you know, they put on a show. Uh, but me, I actually like to go where the hood is. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes me different. I like to go where the hood is. I like to go where the hookers is uh, or are. Uh, uh, correct my English. <laughs> this is live TV. <laughs> but I like to, I like to go. Uh, there was one time I rolled up on a, on, a, on, a, on a gas station. This is just to give an example. There was this dude, you know, and I can tell his aura was different. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of slang and a lot of dialogue. And, uh, you know, I had on a suit and you know, he wanted to talk to me like, uh, you know, I was some suit. And I was like, man, don't, get, don't let the suit fool you. All right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm the, I'm the type of cat that, uh, yeah, I said cat. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, some of us have forgotten. That's another, that's another thing about me. Some of us has, have forgotten where we come from. I come from the hood, okay? And, you know, my upbringing, uh, you know, it's a little bit different than most. Uh, and, and some would say, you know, I've been there. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, what makes me different also, I'm not afraid to talk about uh, the things have, uh, you know, went, went wrong in my life. Because those right. things have brought out the best in my life. You know, I was, I was raped at seven. I was molested at 13. You know, my stepfather was very abusive. I seen my mother in and out of hospital. But I took those tools. I didn't say catastrophes. I took those tools and, and God showed me as I learned how to read his word. He showed me through le learning uh, to read his word that those were tools that he gave me to help change and turn people's lives around. Because I'm not afraid and I'm that kind of pastor to, who will touch into individuals' lives. And God will send me right in your backyard, your front yard, all over in your bathroom. <laughs> and, and, you know what I'm saying? I'm that, uh, that's what makes me different. Then most, and I'm loud, I'm obnoxious, I like to have fun. <laughs> you know, I tell jokes over the pulpit. I know some other preachers do the same thing. And I know some other preachers out there saying, you know, you ain't no different than me. And I congratulate you. I congratulate you from going out on the streets and dealing with the hookers. Because there was a woman in the Bible, her name was Gomer, and she was a hooker. And God used his mouthpiece, the prophet, and told him, I'm going to show you how to love my people because I'm going to give you someone who you can't stand to be around. You know, and they're going to always, that's, 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 you know, I can go everywhere. But that's who, who I am. I'm an everywhere brother. I just, I just love, I love people. You know, I, I know I said a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> and how do you know when to trust somebody? Well, you can't. You can't trust anybody. But what you can do is you can trust yourself. Okay, you can trust yourself. Uh, because, I mean, I've heard before uh, that, oh, you can trust me, you can do this, you can do that. But in, in the same token, you really can't trust them because uh, once you start listening to their words, what are coming out of their mouth, it's, it's going to expose their intent. It's going to expose their purpose. Uh, and see, with God, uh, you know, be, of course, me being a pastor, I really got to pay attention to what people say to me. OK, uh, because uh, I can be gullible, but in the same token, you know, I, I could be one of those dudes with a switchblade. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to cut you. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to cut you so deep with the word, uh, you know, and also just just street verbiage. If I have to go there, I'll take it to the hood if I got to go there, you know. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, as, as far as trusting someone, 
You know, you really, I mean, the Bible says two shall be laying in the bed and one shall be left behind. What does that really mean? That means that you, you really can't trust nobody, but God knows the intent of the heart. And if, I, and if I turn my favor, my strength, my passion, my love, my endurance over to him, he's going to direct my path. You know what I'm saying? And, and he's going to make sure that I stay on straight street. Okay, you know. well. Yeah. Thank you for trusting me with your book. <laughs> for sizzle, my <laughs> nizzle. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about your book? Okay, well, once again, it is Authentic Flavor of God. I really wrote that book because, uh, you know, once again, there's a lot of people out there with a misconception. And one of those misconceptions is because you don't read. The Authentic Flavor of God is just a book who's just talking to you. I just want to talk to you. I just want to have a conversation with you. And most people, let's say if, if I'll close myself up in a box, this is what Authentic Flavor of God is. You just close yourself up in a box and just read, okay? Or hypothetical, let's say, let's say if I was preaching a message. If I closed myself up in a box and you couldn't see me, you didn't know who I was, all you heard was my voice, I think you would tentatively listen. Okay, and this is what authentic flavor of God is saying, that you just, just listen to him speak just like he is speaking through another man, another friend, your mom, your dad. And, it's, and even in saying that, your mom and dad, this book is talking about God's flavor. You know, your great grandmama, your dad, uh, your baby mama, sister, cousin, <laughs> all of them, you know, they will give you some advice, but it's not godly advice, Okay. Now, when I go to this book and I read this book and I've written this book over and over, I've ran in my head over and over coming through the scriptures that this is what God is looking for. He's looking for people who would allow people to come to him and be people. Yeah. All right. I appreciate you asking me those questions, but we got to get to these young men here that I have yeah. on the show. I got Troy Cogdell. Troy Cogdell, why don't you tell us who you are? Um, I'm Troy Cogdell. <laughs> right. Um, I'm just a you know filmmaker. All right. Uh, I love writing stories. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, since middle school. Okay. That's when I, that when I first wrote my first story, I was just into it. I was like in that form, my right. like where my story was. Yeah. And then I showed my mom this, right. and she looked at it, and she's like. Troy, you just can't take somebody's book and put this on the computer. Right, right, right. I was like, no. I, I did this. this. Yeah, I did this. Wow. Right, So right. I, I, then that you know, God revealed that talent to me. And then um, I'm also uh, a rapper at heart, you know, music. I love music. Okay, and, okay. So you like to flow and go, yeah, huh? It's you funny. Like it, the way I, um, I started off was just um, uh, I heard this freestyle. And it's, I was like, oh, snap, he went in. And, and I was just, it, it, it revived a rapping in me before. Because okay. I, when I was in high school, I tried to rap. But my friends were like, man, you whack. <laughs> Sit down. And I was, but that just stopped me. But right. then when I heard that, um, it was a street pastor, um, one of my favorite rappers. Once I heard him, I was like, you know what? Whatever, man, I'm just going to freestyle. Right, right. And there have been like many nights. I'm just up all night just freestyling on the beat. Right. Just freestyle, freestyle until right. it gotten better. <laughs> okay, so ask me, answer me this: uh, If if someone wanted to hear some of your your raps or see some of your films, where do they go? Um, for uh, right now to see a film, I just uh, actually released one. Wow. Um, lately, it's called Left the Right One. Wow. Um, I just I wrote it um, just about being faithful and yeah, and I showed it to some friends and they was just like yeah, it's like a romance comedy. It's like Mm, okay, I didn't right. even write. Like, right, I, I realized I don't want to put myself in the box of a genre. Right, but, right. So I just write to write, okay. and then whatever people say, I'm like, okay, I could see this as a romance. So it's a romance comedy. If you enjoy it, you can go to uh, YouTube.com from slash From Heaven Films. Okay, and you will see that film there. And I have a kind of like a PSA or a short bit coming out soon. I'm working on that. It's called My Speech, and it's just for people who feel like they have to shut up or feel like they got nothing good to say. Mm -hmm. So I want them to speak up. All right. You want up. them to speak loud and clear? Yeah. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. <laughs> Can you hear my mic and me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hear you. So we got Mr. Jordan Aguilar. Yes, he is an educator. I have heard him teach. I have heard him at, even at my church. Okay. Also, Troy. Troy also. They both attend the services over at Valley Grove. 
Now, this young man is an educator. Why don't you talk to us a little bit, Jordan? Tell us who you are. Well, sir, I'm uh, 21 years old. Yeah. I'm a junior at uh, New Mexico State University. Yeah. I'm studying um, uh, English, secondary English. I okay. want to be in the schools. All right. Not, not so much the... All my teachers tell me I rant too much about God and this and that. You need to go to public, I mean, the Christian school. I'm really trying to uh, put a foot in uh, to the public school. Yeah, yeah. Also, too, like Troy, I mean, I like the, I like the flow, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's my thing. Uh, I like to rap. I didn't know I had that style until my freshman year of college okay. when, I was, when I was really going through. And like, uh, like you know, the tea kettle, brother. Yeah, you know, you know when, it, when it builds up, when yeah. it builds up heat and you got to scream, you got to let something out. Okay. There was so much pressure around me and so much going on in my life. And the little, the little uh, whistle, yeah. that was my mouth, man. And I had to get it out. Right. I had to right. get it out. Even now as I walk the street here, I still see problems. You know, like, you know, you're from the hood, man. I'm, right. I mean, I didn't grow up in the best neighborhood either. Right, right. And so, you know, I, I mean, we drive-bys, people fighting. I've seen domestic violence, yeah, this man. and that. Yeah, man. Uh, but I'm, I'm on a mission uh, uh, to really have a voice for the street. Yeah, um, yeah, I think one of the biggest problems today in the community is we don't have enough youth leaders. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about 35-year-old right. lead, youth leader in the church. I'm talking mm -hmm. about a leader that's the youth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And as Out the in the hood. Yeah, yeah. That we don't have anyone who's guiding us through the ages and stages of, of life that is right. young. We don't have right. no light. Yeah. And so this is kind of why I really want to get my foot in the education system. Right. Uh, in the public schools at the 8th and ninth grade level. That's a very sensitive level uh i can remember a lot of stuff i went back okay. yeah yeah so that's okay that's awesome ladies and gentlemen let me tell you let me tell you this is this is from our hood this is from our streets where i, I believe uh, aguilar is is from artesia yes, sir. uh troy is from alamogordo and miss vanessa you're from here correct oh, louisiana. louisiana oh <laughs> louisiana and i'm from detroit michigan all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my time. I surely appreciate you. Whoever turned on this dial, serving it up with Joe Nathan. I am your host, Pastor Joe Nathan Haywood, Valley Grove Christian Faith Center. Come and see us, 221 Hogan Road, Vado, New Mexico. We're waiting on you. God bless you and have a good day.